Hi there! This Primavera P6 training tutorial addresses the setup of resources using the new resource wizard. Step number one is to be sure that you have enabled the new resource wizard. That's done in user preferences. So I'll go to my edit menu, scroll down to user preferences, and I'm going to select the checkbox to use the new resource wizard. In this instance, it's already enabled. So I'll click the close button. Step number two is to go to the resource window and actually set the resource up. I'm going to go over to the left here on my directory bar and click the resources window. Don't panic when you get to the resource window and see that it's blank. It usually just means that a filter has been put on the display. So if I look at the top left of the window, I can see that I do have a filter. It's only displaying current projects resources. So I'll click the display options, scroll down to filter by, and I'm going to select display all resources. So the first thing I'm going to do is to select the item on my resource hierarchy that I want to serve as the parent for the new resource that I'm selecting. So I'm going to select project managers because I want to add a new project manager. And I'm going to come over to the right and click add and that will add a new project manager underneath that node on my resource hierarchy. So I'll give the resource an ID and I'll give the resource a name. In this instance, I'll call him Mickey Jagger. And I'll go next. On the next step of the wizard, I need to select the resource type. There are three resource types. Labor, which is typically people. Non-labor, to denote machinery and equipment. And the third option is materials. If I select materials, I then need to select from the Browse button to denote the unit of measure associated with that material item. In this instance, I'm adding a labor resource. I'll go next. Next, I can establish the price per hour. Then I need to identify the default units per time. This means that if I assign this resource to an activity on my schedule, that person or resource will be assigned at eight hours per day in this instance unless I override that value. The next value we need to establish is the maximum units per time. That's the maximum amount of work that this resource can perform on an activity for a particular unit per time. So in this instance Mickey Jagger can work a maximum of eight hours per day going to go next. I can establish the phone number and the email of the new resource. And I'll go next. On the next step in the wizard, I can identify the roles that my new resource can play in my organization. I'm going to click Assign, and I'm going to say that Mickey Jagger can be a project manager, and he can also perform the role of purchasing. I'm going to close down the Assign Roles dialog box. I'm going to select Project Manager first. When I assign a role to a resource, I can identify the proficiency level of that resource when they are performing that role. So for Mickey, he's a master project manager, and that's his primary role in my organization. In other words, that is his core competency. A resource can be assigned one primary role. So for Mickey Jagger, it's project manager. However, he can also fill the role of purchasing, and when he does so, he's skilled. I'm going to go next in the wizard. On the next step in the wizard, I can identify the resource calendar associated with the new resource. I can select from an existing calendar, 
or I can create a new calendar for this resource. For purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to select an existing calendar. So I'll go next. When I get to the Select an Existing Calendar window in the wizard, I can click a Browse button and I can browse and look at or view and or assign resource calendars. Now in this instance, I'm assigning the standard five-day work week as Mickey Jagger's calendar. What's nice about using the wizard is that I can click View, Edit, and actually take a look at that calendar as I assign it to him. And I can view any what the standard work days are and the holidays and the non-work days. I'm going to click Cancel. I'm now going to go Next and I get to the portion of the wizard where I can identify if I want P6 to auto-compute actuals for this resource. And as you can see, it says when auto-compute is selected, the actual units are updated, assuming that the work is proceeding according to the plan. Actual units are based on the percent complete of the activity. In this instance, I'm going to say, no, don't auto-compute actuals. And I, I would do that under two scenarios. Number one, I would want to manually enter that resource's actuals, or I may be using the Progress Reporter application to report actuals. I'm now going to click Next, and Primavera now is asking me if I want to set up the Progress Reporter, which is a timesheets module. And I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to do that at this time, and I'm going to click Next. Notice I'm on the congratulatory screen now, and I will click Finish. Once I click Finish, I can view my resource. So I can see Mickey Jagger is now under the Project Manager node on my resource hierarchy. And I can view the various resource detail tabs associated with Mickey. So I can view the General tab, where I see his ID and name and email and phone. I can go to Codes and assign resource codes. I can view the details where I can see the resource type, calendar, default units per time that I've assigned to him. I can look at units and prices, his roles. I can also add notes. And if we're using Progress Reporter, I could enter the Progress Reporter information. Those are the steps for entering a new resource using the new resource wizard. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you very much.